All right, folks, so back to it, okay? So I'm going to place a lot of these pallets around now, okay? Um, pretty much, yeah, I just, um, we'll go back into the pallet. Um, we're going to add a sound as well, okay? Um, sorry, I was messing around with it yesterday, and I forgot to delete a little section of it. So if I go viewport, and all you got to do now is... Um, let me just find this material. Where is this material? M underscore. What did I call the material? Food, even though it's called a pellet. Yeah. Update this to a <laughs> pellet. It's not food. It's called a pellet. Okay. All I did was I created a material and then I just got a constant. So three. Hold down the three key, left click, plug it into the base color. You got a little like color bar here. And I just made it white. That's all. Okay. And I pressed OK. And I also plugged it into the emissive color. That's all I did. And then I pressed save. And it gave me like this sort of color with a little glow to it, which is really cool. So now if I press play, you know, we're going around. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I don't like the Pac-Man like this way, but it's cool that you can see his mouth animating. All right. Like, it's pretty cool. But I, it's up to you what way you want to leave it. But I'm going to turn the Pac-Man around. Okay. So it's proper top down. Okay. So. Don't worry also about the text being really big there. I'm going to show you how to change the text to a more retro feel because it's an arcade game. Okay. But let's just jump back into the third person character. Oh, let's go into the viewport. And let's just, I'm going to just maneuver him this way. W. Need him to fit. So, yeah, just go around. I think he needs a little bit more to rotate. Yeah, let's see. I mean, I could go from top down view up here as well, which kind of really helps me. I mean, that looks decent. Just want to center him a little bit more. There we go. Cool. Um, okay, go back into perspective mode. Oh, I press play. You can see that he's still eating. You know, he's animating. There's an animation there to him, which is pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, I'm going to keep it like that. All right. And obviously, there's a nice little glow to the pellets that we're eating. Collecting away here. But we want to... I got a little sound for the pellets. I stole it from YouTube, and I sliced it up in um, Audacity just so we could use it. All right. So let's... It's So what we'll do is we will go content. I want you to right-click and create a file for audio. So, you know, right-click, new folder, call it audio. And then just open it up. And I'll put the sounds in here already that I'm going to use soon. You will have them in the description. You just drag them from your file explorer and you drop them in. And you got one here called palette. Okay, palette.wave because wave file. All right. So go back into your palette blueprint. Just go to the event graph. And just before I destroy the actor, I just play sound 2D. And I can get my palette sound and put it in the asset section here. Uh, oh, wait, palette. <laughs> there it is. And then if I compile this and I press play, Every time I pick up a pellet, it makes it sound from Python. So <laughs> satisfying. I mean, to be honest, we we got a game here coming to life really well now. Okay. Now what I want to do is change this font. Okay. So the font will also be in the description. Okay. Um, I think it's called Gamer or something like this. But anyway, um, if we right click, go new. Folder, I'm going to call this fonts. Open up my fonts. Let me find it in my file explorer. Downloads it was just downloaded yesterday. There's a called game over. There, I've extracted it. Okay. All I got to do is just. Oh, just want you to see it. For God's sake. Bloody windows. Uh, game over. Just drag and drop it in here. Then you'll get a little prompt options, okay? Just apply to all, and then click yes. All right. Now our fonts in there. 
I can go back to my UI, go to my HUD, click on this text block, and over here in the appearance section, there's a font section, font family, change it to game over font. And I'm going to click, now I did make it bigger. I made the size 120. Okay, you play around with what you want. You can change the colors if you wish. I'm going to leave it as white. And if I press play now, you can see that it's changed the style. More of a retro gamer look to it. We have Pac-Man so far, right? So it's starting to come to life really well, okay? So that's that part done. What I want to do now is I want to create the ghost, all right? Now, it was a bit hard to find a decent ghost, I'm not going to lie. Um, that was free, okay? So I'm going to right-click. I'm going to create a new folder. New folder, I'm just going to call it Ghost. Open it up, and you'll obviously have it in the description as well. Okay, but I'm just gonna find it in from here. Where's my ghost? Ghost orange. Okay, I'm just gonna drop this in here. And I think is it in FBX? All good. Let's just import it. It's gonna take a little second or two. Yeah, there's all right. So, yeah, we'll uh, right click and we'll we've got our ghost in here, obviously. So, we'll right click, we'll go blueprint class, we'll select character, we'll call it BP underscore ghost, and we'll open this up. Now, I want to bring in a static mesh and we'll call it ghost. So, then over here in the static mesh section, I can find ghost like so. I'm going to rotate him around. And I'm going to make him much smaller. Um, and we need to create some logic, okay? okay. So I'm going to right click in the event graph and call it custom event. Name it to ran. Oh, sorry. Name it to random roam. And then basically random roam, we just need an AI move to. So this node controls like how the enemy, the AI can move basically. So the pawn, we are the pawn. So reference to self. Oh, if I can spell. And then we want to get actor location, which is our location. And from the return value, get random reachable point in radius. Get random reachable point in radius. Plug that into destination. I'm going to make the radius like 3,000. I mean, that's huge, but just to be sure. And then obviously once this is successful, I want to get a random roam again. And then from my... So now I've created this um, custom event. You get event begin play, and we just call it a random roam. Basically, when the game starts, he should move. Okay, now you also need what's called a nav mesh bounds volume. Okay, so quickly add to the project, go to volumes, nav mesh bounds volumes, drag it in here. Okay, we can make it the full size of the arena. And then I'm going to drag my ghost. I'm going to save my work actually. You can flow shift S. Drag my ghost. I'm going to just place him in here for now. And I'm going to press play and hopefully he moves around. He's not moving. I don't know why that is. Let's see. So it's failing, I think. Um, let's just plug that in here too. Oh. Weird. Okay, so it's something to do with. Let me bring that down. Let's go. He's quite small at the moment. I just want to get him to move. That's all. So see, there's no green. Why is that? 
Let's right click, simulate. Okay, now he's working. Okay. So something to do with, I think he was just stuck in the mesh. But see now he's just roaming around there <laughs> like crazy, which is really cool. Um, let me just press play, make sure that's working. Yeah, I'm going to change the size of him and everything, but you notice how he's just moving around, doesn't see me. There's no logic for that yet. Okay, but that's cool. All right, so we're, we're on the right track, all right? So let's start changing the size of the blueprint now. So um, if we open up BP Ghost, I'm going to have to make this capsule bigger. Hope it doesn't break, because sometimes the capsule needs to be the same size as the players. But we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. So I'm making that in around, uh, what size was that? Well, well, we'll come back to it when I have the desired size. Okay, so press R for the mesh. W is going to bring it up. And let's see how that looks. Oh, play an editor. Okay, still moving, that's a good sign. But is not the right size, I think. Because the ghosts are bigger than Pac-Man, or kind of anyway. I want to make them a bit bigger. Yeah, maybe like that. I need to make this capsule maybe a bit taller so I can get it a bit wider. Hopefully that works. He doesn't get stuck now. All right, okay. I'm liking it. All right, he's moving good, too. Oh, I'm stuck now. Oh, he's got me stuck. Oh, okay, to be fair, when he collides with me, he will um, kill me anyway. Okay, so that's cool. All right, so we have our ghost now, okay? So, yeah, the dimensions of the capsule, 108 by 78, and then the player is scaled at, like, 0.685, okay? Spread it around there, okay? Adjust it to your liking, it's fine, all right? So, Ideally, when the game starts, let's. So the ghosts are usually in here. I'm probably going to have to rotate this around, right? Yeah. So I'm going to select the floor, select my walls. I mean, I could just select everything, right? Wait, how is the game? Let me just press play. Oh, no, that's right. Okay, that's fine. I was just looking at it the wrong way. So we're going to put him in here, okay? And then, you know, the ghosts don't really... They don't go random roaming right away, okay? So I'm going to put a delay in the event begin play first. And I'm going to allow five seconds. All right? And then let's count it down, okay? So one, two, three... <laughs> well, he can't do anything to me yet. He doesn't have sight or hear any perception yet. So cool. All right, that works. So I just get I get addicted to that. All right. So we've done that one. Um, I guess now we're going to give it some logic. Um, where he will chase us if he sees us. Okay. So we'll do that on the next one. All right. So um, catch you on that next one. Thank you guys.